were talking about art, I, you know, and, and staff were asking me to bring in an artist from Atlanta. Nat was one of the first people I thought of. Um, Nat was one of the, the first, like, really good friends I made in Atlanta. Just when I first moved here five years ago, going to open mics in the city um, for spoken word and other kinds of art. Um, and me and Nat just really hit it off. <laughs> Um, having that Caribbean tradition and caring so much about love and relationships in our community. Um, so I'm so glad that you're here, Nat. And uh, we can go to the, the next slide. Okay. So you'll notice that I put part-time potter here. And so on top of being a brilliant wordsmith, Nat, <laughs> Nat's laughing because he didn't know I was going to put this on here. Nat is also um, a potter and makes really brilliant pieces and mugs and bowls and all kinds of things um and I'm adding this here just to say that like beyond the things you do with words and the things you do with community building you're also so much so like a true artist because I know that you move across many different mediums and yeah you're just you're just so intentional with that um so I wanted to recognize that here in front of everyone um, also, I have Nat's social media here, so like, if y'all want to follow on TikTok, especially Nat is posting videos of you know him making pottery and stuff like that, <laughs> which is very soothing. Usually, there's some nice music and stuff. Um, yeah, so Nat is from Kennesaw and grew up there, which is in Metro Atlanta. Um, has a really beautiful open mic called the Space there, and we were talking recently about um, Nat you know, the open mic is growing. And so they're starting to generate money, um, people paying to come in. And Nat has a team working with them. And so he started, like, we started having conversations about how do we make sure that the team is being paid and that it feels good? Because um, Nat does not want to be a traditional boss. <laughs> and so, of course, I was like, oh, my God, have you heard about the solidarity economy? There are some models here that that might be useful for you. Um, and so we got to talking about that. And then um, when I started the Economics for Emancipation Study Group, Nat was one of the first people that uh, we were in conversation with because I knew he was so interested in learning about these alternative economic models. So um, I'm not going to say anything else. Nat, I'm going to pass the mic over to you. You can introduce yourself, um, say a little bit about the solidarity economy, and then spit your poem. Hello, 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 everybody. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, thank you, Julian, for for everything you do, man, for, for, for inviting me to this space and for exposing me to this, this world that I wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to. And also just for being my friend, man. I really love you, dog. Um, you got my face looking crazy doing these pots and shit because I'd be really focused, um, but that's okay. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I'm a poet. My name is Nathaniel. I'm, um, I'm a poet amongst other things. Um, hmm, where do I begin? So I started an open mic in Kennesaw um, because um, Kennesaw, Georgia is like just the suburbs. There's not a lot going on out here. And I spent most of my life here and I didn't start um, writing and performing poetry until I was 22. Um, but I knew about it since I was in like high school. And the only reason that I didn't do it before was just because I didn't have like the spaces to, to, to be exposed to that kind of art. And I recognized that a lot of the best artists and a lot of the best poets and a lot of the best singers and like all of these artists simply aren't practicing because they aren't exposed to it yet. Like there's so many people who um, start a start a practice later on in life just because that's when they, you know, find it. And the purpose with the space was to um, bring a lot of that energy and community that exists in Atlanta um, out to the suburbs and to places where people don't normally come across it. And it's been a beautiful experience, and I'm really grateful for it. Um, I'm really grateful uh, again for Julian for showing me kind of like um, the the uh, the alternatives to um, not being like a boss because even like the idea of saying I own a company is really gross to me like it's, it feels icky and so I'm like learning how to kind of navigate that and 
be a leader while also like feeling good about it. And, um, you, <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, uh, we're figuring it out as we go. It's scary, um, but like, it's art at the end of the day. Like it's, that's every art creative process, you know, just figure it out as you go. Um, normally I am a love poet. That's like my bread and butter. Um, and I find that a lot of things I talk about, I end up talking about love at the end of the day. Um, so this first, or this poem that I have for y'all, it's, um, I revisited it from 2021 and it came from a tweet that Julian tweeted out randomly one day. Um, and he was talking about how a lot of like political poems are trying to save this country. Um, and the twist of it was like, okay, can we just let this thing die? So then we can build something new from it. <laughs> um, and it really inspired me. And so I started writing from it um, and I readdressed it um, and kind of expanded on the ideas of it in preparation for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share it. I think Julian had a slide of it up or something. If not, no big deal, but there it is, boom, right there. So um, feel free to follow along. If you haven't heard poetry before, it's, it's a, I like to say it's a conversation. So um, I know it's on Zoom, so it's a little weird when, when it comes to like saying things, but feel free to like make gestures. I'll have the chat open up so I can see your responses. So if there's any line that speaks up to you, um, feel free to drop an emoji or a word or something. So I know that I'm not talking to myself. Cool. We could practice right now. Yeah, I yeah. saw the thumb and I appreciate you. Love, love, love. Um, so cool, let's get started. <clears throat> For God's sake, let this country die. And for the devil's sake, let its demise be sweet. Grant me the immorality of the powers that be so that they may, so that I may relish in their anguish as they did me. Give it a poetic death. Let it be the result of a black heart under cardiac arrest. Leave this beast breathless without a leg to stand on so that the snake of a sovereign state may be trampled. Leave it lying, dying from its own poison begging for an antidote from the tight-lipped strange fruit as they learn what it is to hang on words. When they seek help from a doctor, let it be a forgetful one, one who mistakes their pain for complaining or better yet, their stethoscope for a gun and we will forgive them because their job is stressful. And all they did was treat the perceived threat. All they did was their job. When it's time to lay this country to rest, let it be a celebration of life. The second line playing away the winter and this will be the last march. Speeches will remember them dearly, I mean, clearly. Like when they civilized the savages, I mean, committed so much genocide, the weather shifted. Or that time they freed the slaves, I mean, changed the job title with no raise and called it a promotion. Or how they always stood for justice. I mean, stood on justice's neck. Well, at least they were smart, like truly gifted. I mean, so stupid. They slit the gift horse in the neck, fashioned a coat from the warm weather, discarded the carcass under the assumption that when it was time to pull the cart, it would not be their problem. Made an ass of us. So for the love of God, let this country die. And since these words are powerful, let me also speak life of rebirth, a holy baptism emblematic of redemption. Turn this country into community whose primary currency be love, whose value be in each other, whose resources be a relationship and sounds of conversation just be freedom from former sins ringing in our ears. Thank you. Woo, y'all can come off mute. Woo! Hey! Woo! Hey. Hey. Yeah. I, I appreciate you. you. Go, what, what was that? I was going to say, I wish we had time for a talk back, but thank you so much, Nat. That was oh, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> y'all can continue sounding off in the chat. We're not going to kick Nat out. So <laughs> if you want to <laughs> hang out and read those, please do. That was incredible.